a new roughing and rest roughing method has been added to FijiCam known as Vortex. Vortex can be used in 2.5D, 3D, 5-axis positional and turn mill machining. Vortex is a high performance roughing technique that allows us to run with much deeper cuts and much faster than we would with traditional roughing techniques. The reason we're able to do this is because Vortex controls the engagement of the tool at all times throughout the entire length of the toolpath. By using Vortex, the calculated engagement angle for the program step over of the tool is never exceeded. This means that the tool is never overloaded at any time, so there is no risk of premature failure of the tool. Because of this controlled engagement technique, it allows us to run the tool at its maximum performance. Typically, the engagement angle increases significantly when the tool is moving into the corner of a pocket. Vortex gets around this excessive engagement by introducing a trochoidal type motion to gradually remove the material until the corner is cleared away. At no time during this trochoidal motion is the engagement angle exceeded beyond the programmed step over. Let's have a look at uh, how we create a Vortex toolpath within FeatureCam. So to generate a particular toolpath you can see I've got three pre-created features here. Uh, I'm just going to turn off the first two features and have a look at the vortex roughing feature. So to create a vortex roughing feature we of course select our part surfaces and in this case we create a Z level type strategy but on the strategy page itself you'll notice that we have a new radio button called vortex. By selecting this option we go to the roughing area over to milling you'll notice that you get three new parameters vortex minimum point spacing vortex minimum radius and vortex Z lift distance. Of those three parameters the minimum radius is the minimum radius that is set for the trochoids that are introduced to control the engagement. We have the minimum point spacing which is just simply the space between the points and the toolpath. And then finally we have lift on air moves which lifts the tool in Z slightly at the back end of the trochoid. This is basically the return of the trochoid where it's not actually taking a cut but lifts the tool away from the material or away from the part. Now in this case what we want to do is we want to uh, analyze and have a look at what the vortex toolpath looks like. Now we can look at previous conventional type roughing. So there are several different approaches. I've put two in here. So conventional roughing we can see here we've got uh, smooth, no trochoidal, uh, small step down and big step over. If I was to play this as a centerline simulation and view from the top of the part we can see the shape of the toolpath segments like so. so. This is one traditional approach that we might use especially if you had some kind of tip radius cutter that doesn't have a large depth of cut capability. However if we're using solid carbide tooling we might have switched to another method of conventional roughing. So in this case we have a smooth trochoidal with a big step down and small step over. And again I can play the centerline simulation and we get something like this. So note that based on the avoid overload percentage we actually missed this pocket region here and we've got a lot of small trochoids around the part. So Vortex takes a slightly different approach. It introduced trochoids, but they're not like these uniform circular trochoids. Let's turn on the Vortex toolpath and simulate as a center line. So here we can see the variation in the trochoid shape to maintain that engagement angle. Now the shape of those trochoids is dictated or the size of them is dictated by the vortex parameters. If I go into the roughing tab, into the milling, I can either physically enter a vortex minimum radius but it also works as a function of the uh, feed rate as well. So here you can see we've got quite small trochoids around the part. If I increase the feed rate and let's make something quite large so in this case I'm going to go up to uh, 0.8 of a, mil a millimetre per tooth, say apply, and then recalculate that toolpath. 
So because the uh, trochoid is a function of the uh, feed rate that we're using, we will see a variation in the size of the trochoids. So the previous toolpath had quite a small trochoid with it, and if we increase the, the, the feed rate, we're going to get much larger trochoids appearing around the part. Sure enough, I view from the top here, you can see the larger trochoids have now been introduced. In this case, because of the size of the trochoids, I'm unable to machine inside this pocket. Let's reset that back to our original setting. And then recalculate the toolpath. Now because Vortex is a high performance roughing technique and allows us to run at its maximum cutting parameters and typically we're going to be cutting uh, with step downs in the region of two to three times the tool diameter. Uh, in this example we're using a, a step down of 24 millimeters for a 12 millimeter car solid carbide tool. Uh, so that's effectively two times the, the diameter uh, and the step over in this case we've set to 20% of the tool diameter which in this case is going to be 2.4 millimeters. So because of this large step down, Vortex uh, is often used with the step cutting technique to remove large step downs by working its way back up the part in smaller increments. In this case we've chosen 2mm increments and we can see this in this area here where we've stepped up uh, back up the part to remove the material on that slope. So looking from the top we can see my, my toolpath and we can see that the completed Vortex toolpath uh, does have um, some similarities with our conventional roughing when we were doing the trochoidal type roughing um, but if we zoom in and have a look at the typical offsets we can see that these are interspersed uh, with the trochoidal technique and the Vortex introduces to control that engagement angle. So this is much more caring for your, for your tooling uh, and a much more efficient process and allows us to run much more, uh, much more aggressive feed rate or an optimum feed rate for our machine tool.